Greetings once again, pirates on the high seas. Dudes Diz Din back with more One Piece. In the previous chapter, we had a flashback to when Vegapunk was visited at Punk Hazard when he still worked there before everything went wrong by Professor Clover, who revealed his name to be Clone de Clover, or Cloudy Clover. Regardless, a D member who wanted to look into things after his brother was killed because he bared the name D proudly. The only reason Clover escaped, denying his relation to his own brother. But Vegapunk told him not to go down that line, warning him about his own safety. Naturally, we know that Clover didn't listen to this, and we saw the moment Vegapunk heard about the Ohara incident, questioning what was so important that his friend would die for it. <laughs> Cut to Vegapunk having done the same thing. Although it now becomes very clear that what Vegapunk has done has come from years of regret over losing a good friend. We also have the sacrifice of one of my favorite Vegapunk's Atlas as she rocketed up to the Labo phase where the Straw Hats were getting ready to escape trying to outmaneuver Ethan Bear and Venus Hero. Unfortunately, a coup de burst as described by Luth wouldn't give them enough lift and if it was interrupted it would end with them crashing upon the shores of Egghead. But Atlas comes in, knocks out Lilith, does something that makes it seem as though Lilith is disconnected from the network, making York assume that Lilith is dead. Atlas attacks Venus Juro while the Straw Hats do a coup de burst and as Venus Juro cuts Atlas down, she self-destructs, pushing the sunny far enough to make it into the water. Meanwhile, the Iron Giant Emmett communicates with Luffy via the voice of all things, referring to Luffy as Joy Boy, which Luffy's like, yeah, I don't know who that is, bruh. Emmett stands against the elders in order to allow Luffy to escape. Jupiter and Saturn attack Emmett, and while Emmett tries to unleash something from his arm, unfortunately, He's super old, so it doesn't work properly, and Jew Peter ends up biting off Emmett's arm, while Saturn jumps onto the giant warrior ship in order to go after both Bonnie and Kuma. Meanwhile, Vegapunk's message continues to play as he reveals Gold Roger's real name, Gold, Gold D Roger, something that it's easy to forget the rest of the world doesn't know. Escapes from Egghead seems imminent. But the elders keep managing to stand in their way. We've almost made it out. Just a little bit more. Can the Straw Hats do it? Especially after so much sacrifice has been done. Join me as I find out, won't you? An absolutely gorgeous cover page. Oda really loves making one of the Straw Hats, especially the women giant. And I feel like this is like the second or maybe even the third cover page he's done where Nami is giant and eating ice cream. He's done that motif quite a few times, but Nami is looking particularly sexy in this one. Mm. Very good, very good. Excellent work as always, Oda-san. Alright, let's jump in. One Piece, Chapter 1121, The Upheaval of the Era. Ooh, that is a hell of a title. Alright, we pick up a little ways from the shore of Egghead. Luffy calls out, watch out for the claws. I guess telling the giants as they defend against Saint Saturn, while the marines on their ships Call out, fire cannons, stop them! While Luffy tells the giants, they're poisoned, don't touch them. And you see all the giants with their shields out defending against St. Saturn's claw strike. The giants call out, we're trying not to touch them, but the attacks are too fierce. We're just saying something, man. Against several giants, Saturn is actually managing to push him back a little bit. Meanwhile, Luffy starts winding up his fist saying, he just keeps coming and it don't stop coming. <laughs> Sorry, no time for that. Uh, down to the very end. Meanwhile, Bonnie is trying to push herself back into the gear fifth form. Luffy notices this. Ooh, while Saturn seeing an opportunity tries to strike at Bonnie, but Luffy manages to knock away his claw before it can hit her. Bonnie then manages to fully transform, leaping into the air much to Saturn's shock as he questions Bonnie <laughs> questions angrily. Bonnie manages to transform, but it's obvious it's taking a toll on her. Although Luffy says, that's it, Bonnie. 
you you do it i think they meant to put you did it while vegapunk's message continues as he says one day the memories of the void century will be recalled and mark my words that day is coming the sinking of the world's continents was a man-made disaster brought about by weapons weapons which by someone's design still exist today and we have Sher hoshi and vivi listening intently cut to stay ipa where I doubt they're listening to the message, as this doesn't really affect them. Where Koinus and Asa are visiting Wiper and his men, guarding God's palace. Vegapunk's message says, The machinations of history and fate seem to insist upon the obliteration of those last descendants of rare races. Right. Buccaneers and the like. Kuma I guess is listening. And we have a flashback to when Vegapunk said, are you a buccaneer? Kuma questions, what makes my blood different from other people's? We also have Marco listening to this in Whitebeard's hometown as he thinks back to Whitebeard's words. Atop the red line, there used to be a land of gods up there. Huh. Did all the other races live on the red line? Huh. We have King listening. Can't tell where he is, though. And King remembers the words, a Lunarian, eh? I hear the government pays a hundred million for tips on your kind. And even Pudding is listening, remembering people's words. Look, she's got three eyes. Huh. So the Buccaneers, the Lunarians, Three-Eyed Tribe, rare races. Huh. I wonder. Meanwhile, back at Egghead, the Giants cheer. It's Nika! And while Bonnie floats in the sky above the giant warrior's ship, Saturn tries to strike at her with his talons. As Bonnie calls out, if there's one score I have to settle, it's with you. While Saturn questions, with that mimicry, a pale imitation? <laughs> yes, Saturn, say that again for the people in the back who keep criticizing that Bonnie has this power out. Although Luffy shouts, get him! As he smacks away Saturn's claws. <laughs> As Saturn continues to just top a vein, pretty much. Luffy chuckles while Bonnie's eyes well up with tears. Ooh, and the memories of it all come flooding back. Everything that Saturn did to Kuma as a child when they first met on God Valley. Saturn saying, your only options are slavery and death. History itself chose them for you. Bonnie calls out. You'll pay for what you did to my daddy and what you did to my mommy. You see, Kizaru still just kind of chilling out. Santamaru, who looks like he's on a ship, sailing away maybe? Hmm. Bonnie remembers when Saturn held her aloft, telling her, I performed chemical experiments on your mother. But Bonnie tells him in present day, you people aren't gods. But gods do exist. Oh, and Bonnie, she unlocks memories of her mother, saying, Hi, Bonnie, it's me. I'm your mommy. She remembers her father's words when he told her about Nika, saying, He'll show up and save you. And they did the dance. And we have the present day Kuma listening in silence. Bonnie cries out, And so do heroes. I wish we could have lived together as a family. There were times I wanted to die if I had to be alone. But I won't. I'm going to live. Because they wanted me to be alive. And memories of a future that could have been flood into her. Of Kuma and Bonnie welping, welcoming her into the world. As Kuma says, thank you, Bonnie. Thank you for being born. Oof, 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 mm, oof. That one hits an old ticker. Ugh. I've seen so many people do artwork of Kuma and Jenny and Bonnie together as a happy family. <laughs> like, even Otis just like, yeah, yeah. I know what I did. And as Saturn readies himself, calling out to Bonnie and Luffy, telling them, Insects! Vermin! Bonnie reels back her fist, enlarging it and giving hockey to it, while Luffy hockeys up his fist. Bonnie cries out, Liberation! And we see Iceberg and the Foremans, as well as his secretary, listening to the message. We see Caesar and Judge arguing. The scientists of Wertheria listening to the message. The destruction on Egghead as it's engulfed in flames. The Iron Giant being decimated by Jupiter and Warkiri as Vegapunk's message continues on. If the worst should come to pass, I want you all to take care of yourself, no matter what should happen. I believe in the intelligence of mankind. I believe in science. Oh, the message interrupts, but it sounds like 
Roger died 25 years ago. Whitebeard died two years ago. But the fall of these legends were merely the prologue of a new era. Cut uh, Bonnie hitting Saturn with her Nika punch while Lucy had loads of gatling on Saturn supporting her hit. And that's, that's so like Lucy. Because Lucy's done that multiple times, supporting those who are younger than him, those who he encourages to fight, like Shirahoshi, or even the moment with Momo where he let Momo bite Kaido is like, see, you bit him. What do you have to fear anymore now? Luffy has become the person who helps others conquer their fear. I mean, he's done it plenty before, but he's also made a note of letting others Get that hidden if they really want it. Do you want to strike down your enemy? Join me. I'll help you. <laughs> and as Saturn is decimated, they literally punch holes into him and he's knocked off of the boat. As Vegapunk's message says, And now, these people who refuse to buckle under any and all suppression, who are the closest to the truth, ironically enough. Oh, wait, and, and all suppression. They are the ones who are the closest to the truth, ironically enough. Then again, perhaps it was Roger who sent them there. And as Saturn falls off the giant warrior ship, the giants cheer. Bonnie cries out, tears streaming from her eyes. Luffy laughs, saying, <laughs> he blew into pieces. Good job, Bonnie. Kuma seems to give a smile. But Dory and Brogy look up. But Dory saying, look. Brogy adds, isn't that your ship? And as they look up, we see the Sunny propelled by Atlas's explosion through the air. As Luffy says, it's the Sunny. Meanwhile, aboard the Sunny, Jinbei is steering while Chopper is hanging onto his head. Usopp freaks out saying, falling, dying, help, falling, dying, help. But Zoro, he readies himself for an attack midair. Mm. Oh, we have a flashback to Roger's execution where he said, my treasure? Why, it's right where I left it. It's yours if you can find it. I left everything in the world there. Shocky puts a blanket over Rayleigh, saying, You're gonna catch a cold, Ray. As he's passed out, the pirates, I guess on Hachinosu, cheer, saying, Oh, Vegapunk! I like the sound of what you're saying. We cut to the hideout of Emperor Blackbeard, Pirate Island, full of lead, the Hachinosu, where the pirates cheer, saying, Is the Commodore screw back yet or what? I can't just wait around like this. Meanwhile, on a ship of Red Emperor Red Hair on the Red Force, oh, it seems like Shanks was also drinking like Rayleigh, remembering his captain. And someone says, Captain, you might have had too much. And Shanks says, No, I'm not. You're drunk. Alvea Pump's message says, The person who winds up with it may not be the one Joy Boy desired, saying that it's not guaranteed that the person who Joy Boy wanted will get the treasure in the end. Meanwhile, at the hideout of Emperor Buggy, Empty Bluffs Island, the pirates inside say, We weren't wrong after all, Chairman Buggy. You always find a way to outdo our wildest imaginations. Buggy says, Huh? They say, we had no idea the story was this vast. Buggy goes, huh? <laughs> the pirates say, there is no ceiling to your ambitions. <laughs> While Mihawk and Crocodile are just listening to this. Although I can't tell if they're more stern about the message from Vegapunk or something else. Meanwhile, at Marine HQ, the Marines say, it can't happen. We must find it first. Well, someone says, then who's going to save the people? Think, idiots. Think, idiots, think! So even the Marines are after the One Piece now. Oh, God. Vegapunk's message continues saying, There is no stopping the tide. The fate of the world now rests in the hands of the one who finds it. Who? The person who cla lays claim to the One Piece. Da -da A nice splash page of Shanks, Luffy, Blackbeard, Buggy. <laughs> the Emperors, Akainu, Dragon, hmm, someone in the shadows, Eam, Kobe, Aokiji, Garling, and Sabo. Hmm, so these are all the big players. But who's the one person still in the shadows? Huh, interesting. Man, so yeah, this really feels like we're in the final part of the story. Because uh, what kicked everything off? Roger's call to arms to go after the One Piece. What helped spurred even more pirates on 
Whitebeard's claim that the One Piece is real. And now you have Vegapunk saying the fate of the world is now decided by the One Piece. Making it so that it's not just pirates after it anymore. It's marines. It's revolutionaries. It's everyone. Everyone is after the One Piece now. Because the fate of the world depends on it. It's not just a treasure. It's something far beyond anything you could have imagined. Oof, there, there's, there's this weird sense of excitement bubbling up from that statement. The fate of the world will be decided by the One Piece. Oof. And Luffy supporting Bonnie like a big brother. Yeah, cause Luffy's done that plenty of times. Like I said before, it's, it's something we've been seeing Luffy do a lot more recently. It's not just a matter of him wanting to defeat someone's villain for them it's now a matter of let me help you defeat that villain get involved with me get a hit in even if it's just one that's that's some good stuff right there that is that's so sweet ah oof. i gotta say it it is invigorating oh baby but Saturn's falling in the water is is it gonna survive that because it's hard to tell these these Elders have survived a lot of stuff. Not to mention Emmett. It looks like we're leaving Emmett behind. I mean, we've kind of officially escaped Egghead, but at the same time, not quite. <laughs> Zoro seemed to be preparing himself for something. Was Ethan trying to follow? So we might be off, but maybe not quite. I feel like next chapter will really decide if Egghead's done done. But we're kind of getting away. But what happens to Stussy? Did she make it off? It seems like Sentamaru got away, so maybe Stussy is with Sentamaru. Hmm, I don't know. I'm, I'm really curious about the aftermath of all of this. There's, there's a lot of important stuff happening here. And normally we don't get what's going on around the world till after an arc but it's been all during this arc so what's the aftermath of this maybe just bounty increases i don't know wild stuff wild stuff but let me know your thoughts in the comment section below what was your favorite part of this story do you think egghead is finally done do you think we'll have another few more chapters one two whatever let me know your thoughts how'd you feel about luffy and bonnie's little combo attack there good stuff good stuff I i'm ready i am ready the pieces are on the board time to play the game for real this time let me know your thoughts in the comments like comment subscribe if you enjoyed the ride thank you so much for watching and until next time i've been dudes this din and hope to see you Later. Take care. Bye-bye.